And then going into this election year, I know it's an important one for everybody. So speak to the importance of everybody getting registered to vote and actually going to vote come November 4th. I, I, I mean, it's, we all know how, how important it is. We, we all know how imperative it is for us to get out there and vote and to, you know, to get people to get out there and, and actually vote because it's, it's more serious now than ever, right? Yeah. And, you know, people always talk about, why should I vote? My vote don't count. Or I, I don't want to vote. I don't like none of the candidates. But you, you, you can't like what we're dealing with, right? You can't like what we're dealing with as a, as a society, as a country, as a community. So why not go out there and vote? It, it, it's a lot of things that need change. It's, some things not going to change overnight. Some people not going to change overnight. Mm -hmm. But we have, to, we have to flood the polls, especially this year and these next couple of weeks. We have to flood the polls. We got to get people out there. It's a lot of laws and, 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 and things that's going on that's been written for years and years that we need to be changed, that we got to try to bring new, you know, kind of bring new laws into it and, and just new things that we need as, as, a, as a community, as a country. So we all know how important it is to vote. Everybody get out there and vote, um, deliver that message, you know, talk to people, make them understand, educate them, give them the information that, that, that they need. But we have to get out there and flood the, for flood the polls this year. Absolutely. And how have the conversations been between like your friends and family? Because for me, I feel like now people are more invested in who they're going to vote for and, you know, doing their research from even the presidential level down to the local level. So how have those conversations been amongst like your friends and peers? We never was educated on voting mm -hmm. and we never knew, you know, who we had to vote for or why we was voting for this for this person. It was just we knew it was cool to vote. You know what I'm saying? And, and honestly, in 08, when we was when we was allowed to vote, you know, that was kind of the first time that I, I think I voted for for Obama, yeah. and I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't know, you know, what what was happening in the politics and in the presidential election, but I knew we needed change, and I knew that Obama needed to be in there. But now we got kids, right? We 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 got families and, and our kids, friends who needs to be educated. They talk about it. Those conversations are very uncomfortable, but. We, we need to have those conversations. It's insightful. And a lot of times we learn a lot from our kids and the younger generation because they're the ones that's telling us what they want to change and what they need change, you know, and, and, and things that they want to see happen over these years. So it's, it's more of an education, uh, educational thing for me with, with my family, just hearing them out, listening to them. But at the end of the day, they understand it. Kids, too. They, they understand what, what's going on today. You know, also, too, I think when we're, when we're when you're growing up and you hear about politics, you think, you know, you have to be a politician. You know, what I mean, like you, you really don't know. Right. It's like besides CP on this call, I don't think none of us are politicians. But I think like like Melo said, you know, growing up, it was never it was never positioned to us how important it was, right? And also too, you know, when you think about voting, everyone thinks, you know, when you vote, it's just about voting for the president. It's so many other seats that needs to be filled. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about this word called change, the change just don't happen up there. The change happened from the ground up. So it's so many other, other seats that need to be filled that we need to educate ourselves on who to vote for. Right. So, you know what I mean? So like, you know, and I think everybody gets so scared. It's like, I don't want to vote for that guy or that guy, where it's not just about those two. You know, it's about the whole, you know, political party and being able to put people in the right seats to be able to, you know, put in, you know, the 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 certain things that we need in place. It's certain bills that needs to be passed. You know, as we continue to to grow as people, you know, it's certain things that need to change, and we need certain people a part of that, you know, along the way. I sure. think I think, the, I think the key word that both of them said when they just talked was educate, right? Like we, it's so much we don't know. Right, and that's why I keep talking about the bubble and when we lost uh, uh, John Lewis, right? Like everyone, you know, posted now because I think a lot more people are aware, right? A lot more people are aware. And one of the things when you talk about educating and this is stuff that we're going through right now, right? Because you think about the election, like they said, you think about the presidential election, but it's the local yeah. level, it's the local level. And then all these props, right? Y'all watch TV, right? Yeah. I see all these prop commercials come on and you'd be like, man, what's that prop? What's that one? So then when you go in there to the to the ballot box, you're like, man, what, what am I what am I doing? So I actually just heard this recently that you got different group chats, right? Put all the props into a group chat and break them down, right? And you'd be like, look, if there's 10 people in there and it's 30 different props, you like, look, 
each person take three props and you break those down. So, cause it can get, it can get overwhelming. Yeah. Right. When you walk in there and you see all these names and you just, you like, Ooh, I picked that person. I picked that person <laughs> <laughs> for real. So the, the, the more you do stuff like community together, right. And that's why I'd be so excited about our social change fund is because it's, it, it actually makes sense because we always been on a team. Yeah. Ain't none of us been like no tennis player. We wasn't uh, golf, even though D-Wade think he played now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like those are sports where it's a lot of times you, you know what I mean? But we've always been in team sports. So that's why this social change fund makes so much sense because it gives us an opportunity to be on another team. For sure. And then I think, um... Also, right, you got 90% of the league registered to vote as well. No, 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 it ain't 90. It's about 95, 96. 95, 96. <laughs> you got to get the facts, right? Like, oh. <laughs> and Something and, and, only and, a politician could do. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but look. Politicians that, know the numbers, don't they? That, that tickled you, didn't it? I don't know about that. <laughs> that tickled you. But look, seriously, like, I know you just said, like, that I got, like, no, nah, it, it was another awakening in the bubble. Right when when the game stopped and we got in that room and we had everybody in there, now the numbers is something that everyone with the union we knew, but we didn't necessarily tell everybody because we knew it would get out and it would make our league sort of look bad. But it's a time and place for everything, man. When the guys found out that less than twenty percent of the guys voted in the last two elections, I think everybody started to look at themselves. Right, yeah. like yeah. We, we we started to hold each other accountable, and everybody was like, man. Man, is that public knowledge? Do they know it's me? Do they know it's me? And so now we did half the battle. We got all these guys registered. And now November 3rd, we got to show up and vote. Sure. Uh, oh, also too, I mean, mm -hmm. another important thing that we're doing is we're talking about, we're telling everybody that we need them to vote. But we also got to understand that everybody doesn't have the same means that everyone else has, even when it comes to getting to the, getting, getting to the polls. Yeah, so right. be able to be in a position that we're all in to be able to partner with, which we have, we partner with Lyft to mm -hmm. offer these complimentary rides to get people to the polls on election day. You know what I mean? It's going beyond just saying, hey, let's vote. It's figuring out ways and it's, it is partnering with other brands and other people who have the ability to make it easier for people to get to the, to the polls. So that's another thing that, you know, in the social change fund um, that we're trying to create. We're trying to create brands to say, hey, you guys want to do some cool things. Well, how about you guys, you know, help us make it easier for people to vote, right? And, and do a lot of things. So that's something important as well. Yeah. And how important is it for other brands to just get involved in general as far as like, you know, Finish Line, for example, they're going to bust employees over to make sure they're getting, you know, putting their vote in. So how important is it for like other companies to do the same? But I mean, you got to think about it as, as, as a community, right? We, we, mm -hmm. we go in here as a community and we're trying to change one community at a, at, at a time. So, I think these big companies, these big brands, they have to do it. They have to get on board. It's a must that they get on board because if they don't, then it feels like they're not, they not supporting the agenda, right? And, and the agenda is bigger than, you know, just black and white. Like, it's a lot of things that, that needs change. And these big companies and these big brands can actually lead that change. They out there, they selling this product. They have this, all of this information and and. and, and and numbers and, and they know they fan base and they know who they, you know, they demographic. They, we need them to reach out to their, their, their fan base and those, those demo, demographics that they have and really get together and make a play and make a plan and, and execute that plan. They can't just keep saying, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Oh, here's, a, you know, here's this, here's that. Or we, you know, we, we obligating this amount of money to this cause, but sometimes you never see that money, right? Those causes never see that money. So, what we're doing is we we building our community and that's what we want to do. And we want to hold people accountable, right? We want people to come on board with us. If you say you're going to do it, you're going to do it. And we're going to hold, we're going to hold you accountable for that. And, and with what Melo said too, so many more consumers now are aware of how they're spending their dollar, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a, like he's saying, you, you better do it because people, people paying attention. Yeah. People paying attention as you, as you're starting to see that, even black businesses and small businesses are starting to get supported more, right? So if, yep. you're, if you're not doing your part, people are taking a, look at, taking a look at your board, right? To see if it's diverse, mm -hmm. right? Because they see who you're selling to and all this different type of stuff. So everyone's very hyper aware of everything that's happening and um, it's, it's time. Definitely. 
I know D, he's spoken a little bit, so I wanted you to elaborate more on that partnership between Lyft and HBCU Heroes. Yeah, CP, you you you, you elaborate more on HBC, man. That's your that's your team. Um, I, I think it's one of those things where I remember when we saw that partnership, man. I got so excited. I got so excited because uh, one thing about uh, some of the work that we all try to do is we don't try to reinvent the wheel, right? There's so many different people who have already been on the ground doing a lot of this work and actually have the resources, right? I think it might've been Mello or D said it earlier in the talk when they said, look, we know what we're good at, right? And we all just try to pick each other up on these different, uh, in different ways. And so with Lyft and HBCU Heroes, what it does is it gives kids that's at HBCUs the opportunity to get to the polls. Because yep. that's a real thing too. I grew up um, right outside of Winston-Salem, like in Louisville, and the poll that we went to was only like five minutes away from my house, right? So that's all I knew of. I just felt like, okay, most of the polls are close to people's houses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Seriously. Like that's, my mom and dad would be like, we going to vote or something like that. And they'd go up the street mm -hmm. to their poll. And it wasn't until I got older and I realized that's not normal. And uh, that partnership is huge. But even some of these big businesses that are like not forcing people to come to work. Yeah. Because that's another thing with, with voter suppression. Some people may want to vote. And on the day that they want to vote, they boss like, not today. Mm -hmm. You don't come to work, you fire. Like there's all these different things that happen you know, when, when it's time to vote that sometimes because we don't experience it, we're not aware of it. Right. So that, that, that partnership with Lyft and HBCU Heroes for these HBCU students to get to the polls, uh, we're just trying to continue to make, make a way.